Bye. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the year. I had a nice little break in between my last video of last year and this video that I'm starting to film now. And so I am back on the grind. So last year, my last video, I made a coat. Martha May Huvier's coat from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And so I thought if I ended the year on a coat, then how about we start the year making a coat? It's not gonna be a costume coat this time though. It's going to be a 50s inspired swing coat, I think they called it, with this material that I thrifted a while ago. And it's just enough. So I was like, I want a swing coat, so I will make a swing coat. I don't have a pattern for this. What I'm going to do is take the 70s dress pattern that I have and I'm going to adjust it for what I want, which is just extending the end of the coat so it kind of flares a bit. You'll see what I mean, but yes, it is now 2024. And so let's have fun on this channel this year. So here's the patterns all laid out. I just adjusted this so it has a more straight line and I'm gonna cut all the way to the bottom of the fabric so it has a more straight line sleeve and over here I put a lot of space between them because right here is where I'm going to flare the pattern out a bit so they have more of a I don't know a little cute flare to it <laughs> And that's the collar that I plan to give it. Uh, I'll show you my inspiration photo, but that's how I'm going to be working this pattern. And so let me pin this all on. Oh, and I am also going to give it flailed, po fla 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 failed, failed pockets. Uh, that's for later, but for now, and I'm not gonna copy the pattern, like the, the front part has darts right there I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna cut it straight down with a flare realistically I probably should have cut this out of the lining first but the damage is done I will cut the lining out now and then we'll get to sewing Pew. I'm so sorry for the quality of this video. The weather is just not on my side. It wants to be cloudy and rainy. So it's gonna be a bit dark, but I've tried the coat on. It's not doing the flare thing I want it to do, but I think it still looks cute. It looks like a very cute 70s slash 50s day dress or something. I don't know. Yes, I think it looks cute. For now now that i have the outer fabric and the lining sewn together this far i want to make did i say a felled pocket felled pocket earlier i meant a welt pocket uh i just think it bring the vintagey vibe out so i want a welt pocket i totally forgot to cut out the flap i'll do that i'll interface where i need to interface and in this part too because I'm going 
to try and do bound buttonholes. Also, we're just putting all the difficult things in one coat. Guys, I got a walking foot from the thrift store for $6 and it works on my machine. I am so happy about what I found. And here we have me measuring out the welt pocket. I didn't have any exact measurements. I think I made it like almost seven inches. I just put my hand against the fabric and saw how wide my hand is and went with that. And I just copied what I saw in the tutorial, which was the lines that I would have to sew on. And you know what? It worked. And here I'm cutting out the pocket pieces, which I'm just copying the flappy part and cutting out the pockets. For the bound buttonholes, what you can see I'm doing here is I'm copying the marks I made on the coat onto the spare fabric. I just did not listen to what the tutorial told me because ain't nobody got time for that. Or in my case, Ain't nobody got the patience for that. So I just did it that way. And you know what? Again, it worked. So there you have it. Good morning and welcome to day two. Here's what I got done last night. I cut out the pocket pieces. I cut out the welt flappy bits. And I got the bound buttonhole squares out and you know i was so proud of my pattern matching for these uh not that one i was so proud of my pattern matching and then i realized it goes inside <laughs> so you will barely see it <laughs> though they kind of like do that on the wrong side so maybe but like doesn't matter anyways so today we're gonna be sewing all of this and hopefully finishing the coat I'm going to kind of follow a tutorial that I found for the pockets and kind of do my own thing for the bound buttonholes because oh my gosh are they complicated so uh, oh let me show you the buttons I have I thrifted like a whole bunch of buttons like they were just in a plastic bag so here's the buttons that I found in my stash I'm gonna use those and we're gonna have buttons. Ta -da. I think it goes well with the uh, pattern of the fabric. So I'm gonna start sewing. I think I'm gonna do the bound buttonholes first, just so I can get those done because they seem not complicated, but complicated. Here we go. My first bound buttonhole ever. I found that bound buttonholes were not really that hard to do. I think they're more meticulous to do because you have so much small stitching. I'm really proud of how mine came out. Could they have gone better if I had listened to the tutorial? Absolutely. But for doing my own thing, they came out pretty well. So if you have never tried bound buttonholes, I definitely urge you to try it. Guys, look, my first bound buttonhole, and I'm so proud of it. It looks so good. For not doing it properly, I think it came out really well. I mean, I did do it properly. I just like didn't base stuff when I was supposed to. Ah, I'm so proud of it. This one, the top flap 
came out a bit too long, but that's okay. It still matches up. Now this one here, this one here, uh, it doesn't match the pattern, which is sad, but it looks good and I'm happy. I did my first pound buttonholes, oh my gosh. I thought that was gonna be like a long off project, but looky here. Now it's time to make my first ever welt pocket. <sighs> Again, the welt pockets were even easier than the bound buttonholes were. The tutorial I used the person was doing a side welt pocket and mine was straight down. So I had to improvise a little bit there. It was a little challenging, but it's kind of the same principle as a bound button. So it wasn't too bad. I think the most challenging part was coming up with my own pattern since I was making this all up as I went. I have pockets now. They came out really good. I'm proud of myself. It's my first time doing a welted pocket. And I'm happy. And I have my bound buttonholes, though I did indeed put them on the wrong side, but that is okay. I have pockets now. So now I can finally pick up the lining again and sew everything together. We can give this coat some sleeves, we'll give it the lining, and we'll put the collar on. And I'm so happy because I cut the pattern on the selvage edge for like everything, so I don't have to hem the coat or the sleeves. Let me show you how long these sleeves are. Dang, it can't even all fit in frame. Like here's my shoulder and then <laughs> Here's where my hand is. That's how long the sleeve is. It goes all the way to my knee. That's how long it is. There's the sleeves that I can also sew on now. I now regret the alterations I made for the sleeves. I have cuffed it up all the way up here and it's still not enough. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to cut some off, but like, I'm so sad. And I should have chosen anything but this for the lining. It looks horrible. I forgot I would need to cuff the sleeves. So I totally forgot this would actually show and not just be forgettable lining. I'm so sad. It looks disgusting. I was being too stubborn with my white fabric when I should have just used it and got some more. It, uh... <laughs> Look on the inside. It, uh... <laughs> I'm so sad. I just look at the sleeves. I had to do this. I just. Ah. <laughs> I guess every project can't be perfect.
I'm kind of butterfly. 